Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about integrity constraint. Now, what do you mean by integrity constraints? Constraints are generally set of rules. Now, these are the set of rules that are defined in order to maintain the data accuracy, consistency and reliability of the database. That means, in general, I want to maintain the quality information in the database. Now, these integrity constraints can ensure that whenever you are inserting data, deleting or updating the data into the database, the data integrity is not affected. It can also act as a checkpoint for ensuring that whenever the relations are modified or any accidental damage will not happen or accidental insertions will not happen. So, integrity constraints can ensure you to see to that the database is maintained accurately. So, who will define? Generally, it will be defined by the DBA or the end user generally at the time of creation of that particular uh, database objects. Now, further, what are the types of these constraints? We broadly categorize these integrity constraints into domain constraint, entity constraints, we have referential constraint and key constraints. Let us try to see what does each one of them mean. Coming to the domain constraint, the word domain itself says it belongs to which set. Now, that means what are the valid set of values for that particular attribute. Now, every table has got for example, look at this, it has got a columns like EID, E name, job, salary, location and department number. Now, what should be the valid values for the attribute EID? What are the valid values for E name, job, etcetera defines the domain. Now, what does this mean? Again, we do have, we have already learnt about data types. I say that E name belongs to a string data type. That means, its domain set or there is the valid values, the uh, range can be any collection of alphabets, alphanumeric I can say and certain valid special characters. Coming to this, we said it is number. Basically, when I say integer or float, it has got a particular range depending upon one which I am talking. But further to it, that becomes a domain constraint. But further to it, I can even restrict that that value should be only up to this. That we will see in another constraint called as a check constraint. But basically, understand we say that domain constraint defines the rule for the set of valid values. For example, if you see here, Location, we do have 4, 5, 7, 8, which is a numeric, only numeric value, whereas it should be a string value. So, that way we can try to restrict or try to specify the domain constraints. Coming to entity integrity constraint, any entity in order to maintain the integrity, that means uniquely identifying each tuple in that particular relation, we want to ensure that there is something called as a primary key, which cannot be null, that is very important, which cannot be null and they are capable of uniquely identifying each row or otherwise each tuple in that particular relation. Now, coming to this thing very particularly, we have got something called as key constraints. The key constraints are nothing but their uniqueness constraint, which ensures that every tuple in a relation is uniquely identified. Now, how do I say this? It can have, it can be a part of an entity set. Now, what is this entity set? Entity set can have multiple keys. Now, for example, when I am storing this particular employee details, the key values or the attributes values which can uniquely identify that employee can be one is employee ID which is given by the organization or I can go with say for example, Aadhaar number or I can go for his uh, license, okay, driving license okay. or otherwise if you are talking about uh, any specific entity which can uniquely identify. I mean, no other person will have that same particular, uh, what do you say, value. So, such 
constraints or such attributes can fall under the category of key constraint. Now, there can be composite value also, it need not be alone, it can be a combination. Now, say for example, you take the example of a supermarket, I may have the product uh, numbers, say based on the product type, ok, let me say product type and product name. Now, I may have a example of soap and soap can be Lux, Liril, Santur, etc. So, the product name and product type category can together make it as a unique. Now, same Santur you may have a powder also, you may have a soap also. So, the product type and product name together can uniquely identify that. So, for that reason we say, now we call it as candidate keys. Candidate keys can be single attribute or combination of one or more attributes together and one among them will become a primary key because all those candidate keys are capable of uniquely identifying a record, but one among that we will take as primary key. For example, if you are talking about student, I would have assigned a student roll number as per this college which can uniquely identify. Apart from that, I may also save the uh, Aadhaar card or PAN number and other details which we are also capable of uniquely identifying that particular row. So, when I talk about key constraint, it can be any of those. Now, referential integrity constraint, this is basically to have a reference or otherwise to show a relation between two table. Now, how does this work? The foreign key constraint would be a column that points to the primary key of another relation. Foreign key constraint is a column or the list of columns that points to the primary key column of another table. Now, what is the use of this? We say this is a referential integrity because it maintains the integrity between two tables. How? There are certain rules which says that the referential integrity if a foreign key is, if it is a foreign key in table 1, then it refers to the primary key of table 2. Then every value in the foreign key table in table 1 must be either null or should have a value which is matching with the value in the second table. Let me just show you this example. Look at this. Now, D number I am going to treat as a foreign key in the table employee. Now, I call department as a parent table and employee becomes a child table here. The primary key of your parent table is now taken as the foreign key in the child table. Look at these values 11, 24 and 13 are valid because they are present here. Whereas, 18 will not be allowed because it is not available in the parent table. This is how I maintain the integrity. Now, there is a possibility that this can be null. That means, he does not belong to any department, but he cannot belong to a department which does not actually exist. That is the basic rule of your foreign key or otherwise referential integrity, which ensures that I would not even be able to delete. Say for example, I want to delete this record or otherwise I want to delete, I want to make this as null. It is not possible because it exists in the parent table. So, that is how it can ensure that the integrity is maintained. Now, there are other types of constraints also which will support this. One is not null constraint. Now, by default when I define a column, it can take null values, but there are certain situations where I should not accept null values. Now, say for example, I was taking some student information or otherwise somebody came to enquire about my institution, I want them to fill up a database, I give them a form in which I can contact them at a later stage, there is a column called as mobile number, would you expect that to be null? Never. So, I put a constraint there not null, so it will ensure to that whenever you are inserting data into it, it will be evaluated and if that does not match, it will stop, it will warn. So, here, here we are giving p name and p address and p id to be not null, which says that it is mandatory for me to insert data into that, that is the not null constraint. So, by default it can hold null value. 
Now comes unique constraint. We said primary key is a combination of unique and not null. It cannot have null values, it cannot have repeated values. But apart from being type primary key, there may be certain situation where I do not want a repeated value to be given. I want it to be unique. So, I can restrict that as unique. So, even by mistake while entering or updating the database, if you enter a same number which already exists, it can warn you. It will always be evaluated and it will stop. So, this is how unique constraint works. Coming to primary key constraint, we already discussed this. This is one of the candidate keys which can be selected as primary key, which is going to be a combination of unique and not null, which will help you to uniquely identify each row in the table, each row in the table. So, how do I define in the DDL? I will mention primary key attribute or integrity constraint for which particular column here I am making PID as the primary key. My product ID is going to become the primary key. Foreign key constraint, it is a part of the referential integrity. We discussed about it, what it does. Let us try to see how it works. Now, look at this. This is a department table, which is parent and this is the child table, which is employee. Now, here I have used department number as the primary key. In the child table, I will be mentioning that the D number defined here in this tile table which references to the department table department number. See, DEPT of department is the referring key in employee table in the name DNO. That means, these both are same. So, it will ensure that that integrity is maintained. Okay, I will not be able to delete a department when there are certain employees here who belong to that department. At the same way, I will not be able to enter an entry into EMP table with the different department number which is not present here in the parent table. So, this is how I can maintain that foreign key constraint integrity. Coming to the check constraints. Earlier when I was discussing about domain constraint, I told you that within the domain also I make certain restrictions. For example, uh, okay, let us check here age. We have said age is an integer. Integer values can be negative, 0 or positive, but I have a restriction that age can never be negative. So, I will put a constraint that age is greater than 0 or in this case, maybe it is for eligibility for voting or the way some major students I want to check out. In such situation, I have a restriction that P age is greater than or equal to 18. Or otherwise, uh, let me say I have something called as mobile. I just put it as mobile, which is integer. Okay? Maybe I have set 10, but I want to make sure that the length what I enter See, when I say int of 10, that means it can even have 8. In general, when I say, say for example, here age I said int of 2, value 5 is also valid, minus 5 is also valid. But here I said a restriction. Similarly, here I would say check length of mobile. The mobile is the data type should be equal to 10. I am ensuring that all 10 digits has to be inserted into that particular column. If not, it will evaluate and it will abort. It will not allow you to insert or update. It will show you an error message. So, such constraints can be included using your check constraint. Finally, coming to the default, there are certain situation when most of the values are going to be same. Now, say for example, I was taking an entry or a survey of the people who visited my exhibition. Most of them belong to Hyderabad. So, in such situation, I can take a default value so that even if the value is not entered, it can take it. So, in space when no other value is provided, it can take this default value to fill it up. Okay? So, finally, we will conclude that integrity constraints will ensure 
the data consistency and accuracy as per our requirement. Okay, thank you.